coming to you live from digital address GA0992539 in Kokomemle, Accra. Together we get interactive with you on Joy News Interactive here on Joy News Channel, DST Channel 41 and Go TV Channel 144. Join the conversation on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, Joy News on TV. I'm Selina Ampo, and I'm here with Mapito CVD. Now, to our first story the 400,000 CDs filing fee for NBC presidential aspirants has now been slashed to 300,000 Ghana CDs. The sale of nomination forms, which closed on Tuesday, December 4th, has also been extended to Saturday, December 8th, but the fee still stands at 20,000 Ghana CDs, and the date for the primaries moved from January 19th, 2019 to January 26, 26 2019. Now let's take some comments from Facebook on the NDC filing fee. And we have Emilio Sab Sabogu who says the executive of NDC deliberately inflate the fee to stop other aspirants from contesting JM just because he supported them to win their various positions. This is obvious. And this one is from James Abusanga, who says politicians and their gimmicks, after polluting the airwaves that the amount was irreversible, they turn around to reduce it. Politicians cannot be trusted at all because that is exactly how they will handle our motherland. And we have a comment coming from Richard Kweku Frimpong Mansu Jini Jini, who says, so those who were who wanted the filing fee slashed because they suddenly became people living with disability have gotten something at least. You want to be president and you couldn't raise four hundred and twenty thousand. Ah, what fairy pa. This one is from at uh, Maumud who says, still it's too high. My brother, a tubiga, can't afford it. And we have Ivy who says, 400,000 400, Ghana CD, 300,000 Ghana CD equal same difference. And Owusu Bismarck says, like seriously, so where were the Council of Elders at first? We have Mushin who says, good, they listen. Yeah, they listen. And Abdullah said, he says, hope they don't come and say that. It's still high for them. <laughs> we have Walanyo who comes with the comments, um, the reduction and deduction of NDC presidential hopeful filing fee has changed nothing. The value has still remained the same. Moving on, uh, these pictures of school pupils lined up with placards to welcome President Akufado into the Tema East constituency have been trending on social media. I'm sure a lot of people have seen it. We took to social media to ask, what are your thoughts? All right, so let's look at the placard. And this one says, President Akufado and Honorable uh, Titus Lava will deliver. Now let's see what the comments are saying and mm -hmm. what people have been saying on Facebook. And on Facebook, we have you either you are either irresponsible or deranged to continue exploiting school children to advance your political agenda while their parents pay fees and expect them to be in school and be tutored. Parents who sit aloof and watch their children being used for such unproductive and senseless ventures are equally irresponsible. As for school officials who align themselves to such conducts, the least said about them, the better. Free education with school children spending time in the hot sun, holding placards and waving, in polit waving at politicians and other dignitaries is not the way to build effective and efficient human resource. Ghana's future is at risk if we continue with such backward acts, backward acts think hmm. all right let's see what more people are saying on social media about that uh this one is from at uh, chris who says this is child abuse uh, people in ghana holding npp placards during school hours 
Ghana is at a reverse. All right, you know, a lot of this has been um, trending on social media. I remember the last time uh, when dignitaries come, foreign mm -hmm. dignitaries come to the country, uh, school pupils are taken out of class and, you know, they're made mm. to wave in the sun. And yeah. a lot of people are saying that, as a parent, how do you feel seeing your child there? You, you're at home or you're at work and you're thinking that, okay, my child is at school. School. He's learning, she's learning. But... And he, then you watch TV and then that's your son standing at the roadside holding waving. a placard or waving. It's, 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 but it's, it's been an age-long practice from time immemorial. From Kwame Nkrumah's time, we've seen people stand at the roadside, young kids, holding flags to welcome presidents to a particular area. So it's, it's some sort of tradition. Mm. But to be holding placards that support along um, on party lines, it's quite different. All right, but you can send your messages to 055-815-7074. We put that on our Facebook page, Joy News on TV. Let's see what you have been saying. We're going to start with Kweku Della Amponsa, who says, the only problem here is the NPP logo and the colors. They should have replaced them with national colors and flag. Let's instill national patriotism into the kids rather than party politics. And we have Musa uh, Rahim Bazi, who says there's nothing wrong with that. It will install patriotism and also motivate the pupils to learn hard. Even in the 90s, anything Rollins, anytime Rollins was coming, hooray, holiday for everybody. I think they should not allow the pupils to stand in the sun and also not give party flags to them. And Humble Lion says this is nonsense. Only NPP will do this with impunity. Thank God none of the students there is my child or relative and Sly G says welcoming the president doesn't change the quality of education neither will it change the hardship in the country and that's from James from Afarlo and Isaac Bot says haha my thoughts are my thoughts in 2020 you'll see it and uh, Yao Edu says nothing wrong about it is there long ago and not new it was it has been there uh, from long ago and not new we even do same for foreign presidents okay and let's see what Evan says. Evan says, should school pupils abandon their classes for this? Is this the essence of being in school? This is obviously a misplaced priority. Africa really has to wake up. And Kofi Roberts says, if the teachers can allow the children to do this, then the opposition can also do the same. All right, so Patrick Andor says, this is common everywhere. Why? Even when IIT is passing, people will wave at him. And Peterson says, it's not even possible to see a class going on whilst the president is passing by. It's just not possible. The hypocrisy is too much. People just back anyhow. Erica Pierce says, I remember JJ time. They gave a small Ghana flag and let us stand by roadside to wave it for a president. We stand at the roadside. Uh, we stood at the roadside the whole day and JJ didn't come. Mm. And uh, uh, Ram X says, I'm patiently waiting for GES to issue a strong statement just like the one they, they issued to the Timpani head headmaster. And we have Jacob who says, so no school for them and they are standing in the sun. Too bad, Ghana. And let's take out last few comments. Rafael Paralima says, but it was not in North. That one is not cool. Okay, but if it was not, it was in North. That one is cool. Uh, Philip says, very, very disheartening. Parents whose wards are involved in the, this uncivilized posture must sue the school authority. You're still watching Joy News Interactive and we'll take a break. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back from that booth. You're still watching Joy News Interactive. Remember, on all social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, we're Joy News on TV. Our WhatsApp number is 055-815-7074. We gladly appreciate all comments, messages, and all videos and pictures. Selenam. Yeah. Like social media. We're mm -hmm. talking about social media. Yeah. I'm going to ask you a question, a quick question first. How comfortable uh, in posting your younger brothers, your younger relatives? 
Um, you know, when it comes to posting kits on social media, I think twice because I feel like it's not good. It's not something you don't need to show them that kind of platform yet. They have to grow into it. So I feel with time, yes, I would. But at a young age, I, I don't think I would. Okay. Now, now we're taking the next story. Posting your children on social media has always been a debate to post or not to post. Recently, the conversation came in the limelight when comedian Waris made a comment on Sarkodie's daughter. A lot of people on social media were blaming Sarkodie for exposing his daughter on, uh, on Strong and Sassy last night, however, with Na Shoko. The question on the table was, what are your thoughts on posting photos of young children on social media? Let's see what her guest had to say about it. <laughs> Um, you, you, you tend to expose your kids to a lot of things out there. And it depends. You know, if we are talking about you, the parent, you know, posting maybe, say, birthday, post a, pic of, a picture of your child, wishing your child a happy birthday. I really don't see anything wrong with that. But um, if I have to create a page for my child and there's a step-by-step -step growth, as in what my child looks like every single day till whenever, I, I don't think that's right. I think um, I think the child should grow and make that decision for themselves. Like you expose them to a lot of things. Your social media, you're exposing them to the whole world. You're not just talking about Ghana. You're not just talking about Africa. The entire world. And you even have cases. Look, it may not be it may not be like so um, such a big deal here where you where you have people kidnapping kids or um you know kids going online to start having conversations with people and these people are actually looking out to sort of like you know rape or or whatever harm children Aqua, why no for you um i believe in children the children okay. and my children are very young they are infants in fact um I don't do much of social media. I think that's me as a person. Why? I don't know. Honestly, it's, it's nothing, it's, it hasn't really, you know, it's not that exciting for, for you. me. Yes. But are you on social media? Yes, I am. I'm on okay. WhatsApp, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram. But it takes, if you look, if you, if you look at my page or my profile, you realize that it takes a very long time for me to even post something or like something or do something of that sort. My children, I would not. I, I wouldn't want to expose them in that light. Like, okay, someone just said, oh, that's Nyako's baby. Oh, I've seen a picture. And as soon as you put them on social media, as soon as you put them on WhatsApp, on WhatsApp status or something, someone can just screenshot. And do what with it? And then before you realize, it's on Facebook. Oh, that's Nyako's baby. See how he's growing. See how big he is getting. Or something like that. Or maybe you've got a little girl. Oh, look at how chubby the baby. You know, mm. someone, mm. people have... Certain things they would say you can't about control what people, people think. Yeah. Someone could even How have a very negative comment about it. Because um, really, you know, you cannot control what people say, especially uh, on social media. Um, absolutely, but generally, I haven't really found. Because the thing is, my um, my like my Facebook. I'm, I live on Facebook, and my Facebook page, I'm you know constantly um I'm following, deleting, blocking. You know, <laughs> I don't suffer fools gladly on my page. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, what did they say? So I'll show him the comments. Yeah, that, so, that's the other thing. I mean, if your son is concerned about knowing what people are saying about him on social media, don't you feel that you're allowing him maybe at an early age or too early to be concerned about what the world thinks of him? Well, the thing is, this idea of what the world thinks of you, you will experience that in daily life anyway, even if you're not on social media. As you're going about your business, like she made them, she said um, someone would say a mean comment about your child. People don't just do that on social media. Because social media, what happens on social media is exactly what happens in real life. So people are still rude in real life. People so you, you had Na Shoko and her panelists right there. And quite interesting points they made. You know, Na was saying you, you, you put your son on social media and now he's worried about what people are saying about him on social media. And it's, it's surprising that kids these days are having phones as, as big as this tablet. <laughs> But you know the thing is that your kids, like one of the panelists was saying that 
whether I'm at home, I'm at the mall, someone is going to say something about Definitely. my child. You know, let me just live my life. Let me just live my life. I mean, we're in the era of social media and technology. So whatever I do, let it be up to me, right? And if you're going to make a comment about my child, maybe in some, some perverted comment or mm -hmm. anything, that should concern me. Like, what you're saying about my child should concern me. Like, you should yeah, be concerned definitely. about yourself, you know, not yeah. about the fact that I posted my son or my daughter on social media. So, it's like a 50-50 thing, like... But, you know, Max, you know, right now, in this era, we see people even post from their pregnancy to the day they give birth. So, in some way, somehow, you involve people from the very beginning. So, they want to see the kid as the kid is growing up. Of course, people would, even if you don't post your child, people would ask you, that like, where is a picture of your... People put that on social media yeah. a lot. So, definitely, they get asked about it, that where's the picture of your kid? You showed us your pre-maternity, everything. So we want to see, we are part of the journey. We want to go with what's your it, child. But at the end of the day, it's your social media account, it's your Facebook, it's your phone, so you can do whatever you want to mm -hmm. do. We've seen Shata Wale and his Shata movement. Now we present to you Kube Wale and his Kube movement for our video of the day. <laughs> My love, look. People make her tell you something uh. about the coconut water. Uh. My baby, oh, my baby, oh, I got a fever. Look, when I arrived there, I give them for base room. We didn't have minutes, mommy, no water, no. I Only fertilizer. So, Lenam, after this, let's go get some coconut water. Definitely. I I'm thirsty already. Yeah. I'll only convince you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On that note, we end Joy News Interactive. Remember, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, we're Joy News on TV. WhatsApp, we're 055 815 mm -hmm. I'm Mapita CVD. And I'm Selinam Ampo. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.